Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Matt, and this is the second episode in a series I'm calling What the F*** is that distro? Now, some of you were confused before and wondered what the actual title of the series was, and I'll reiterate it. It's what the F*** is that distro? Now, I can't say that as well as, say, Samuel L. Jackson could say it, but what are you going to do? So, in this series... I find distributions that I've never heard of before, I install them, and I roast them. Or, if they're good, I applaud them for existing. Most of the time, I roast them. So, today's distribution is called Blue Star Linux. Now, if you have never heard of Blue Star Linux, I don't blame you, because I've never heard of Blue Star Linux either. And the thing is is if you go to distrowatch.com, our beloved distrowatch, and you look at their rankings, which we all know are the most accurate things to ever exist, you'll find Blue Star Linux on that list. It's like, let me go see. Let's go ahead and go look at distrowatch right now. We'll go, we'll come back to this page here in a minute. But if we, if we, Zoom in here and scroll down a bit. We'll see Blue Star is actually at number 39. So it's in the top 40. It's above things like Peppermint and Ubu Zubuntu and Void and GhostBSD and Bodhi. All things that are really, really good. And Gecko Linux, which is awesome, based on OpenSUSE. I've never heard of Blue Star Linux before. So I was looking through this list. I was like, you know, most of these things I've heard of before. Like Rocky and Magia and Sparky Linux and Q4OS and... You know, I've heard of all these things before and tried many of them. And they're all, you know, varying levels of good. But I got down to here and I was like, ah, well, I've never heard of Linux FX before. But then I looked, saw Blue Star. I was like, what the hell is Blue Star? So according to DistroWatch, Blue Star Linux is a GNU slash Linux distribution that is based on Arch Linux. So this is an Arch based distro. The Blue Star distribution features up-to-date packages, a full range of desktop and media multimedia software, and the default installation in a live desktop DVD. We have a lot of information in that one paragraph. Woo boy. Lots of information. We know it's based on Arch, and it's a Linux distribution. We also know that it has, uh, let's see here, it's based, it has comes with a Plasma desktop, and it comes out of Germany. So... We have information. So I have downloaded this thing, and uh, we're going to install it here in a minute. But I thought we'd go to the website such as it is. This is the actual website. So they do have a little bit more information here. We'll zoom in so you can actually see this thing. Blue Star Linux is an Arch Linux-based distribution built with an understanding that people want and need solid op rating system that provides breadth of functionality and ease of use without sacrificing aesthetics. Blue Star is offered in three editions, Desktop, Desk Pro, and Developer. Each tailored to address the needs of a variety of Linux users, Blue Star can be installed permanently as a robust and fully configurable operating system on a laptop or desktop system, or it can be run effectively as a live installer and supports the addition of persistent storage for those who choose not to perform a permanent installation. So in other words, you can run this thing off of a USB key and not have to install it on an actual hard drive if you so choose something like Tails or one of those security-based Linux distributions. A Blue Star Linux software repository is also maintained in order to provide additional tools and applications when needed or requested. So that's literally all we have. It doesn't actually have its own website and if you just click the download thing here you're going to get just a regular iso it says it has three versions but i went over here to the files and i'm not exactly sure what they want you to download here because if you just go to the distro you have this one iso here i guess there is another iso here but it's not labeled anything different other than the version number is different i don't see the three distro, the three versions that they were talking about. Their file system here is a little bit not great, I would say. If they have three different versions, I could only find one. So, anyways, it doesn't matter. We're going to install this thing now and find out what the fuck this Linux distribution is. I probably didn't bleep that fuck out. Fuck. Damn it. Fuck. Oh, well. Let's see if I can swear some more, shall we? Now... Because I'm in lovely GNOME here, I can just switch over to my virtual box, virtual VM manager thingamajig here. 
And we're going to, I have already set up the, the VM here. I've given this thing, I believe I've given it like 54 gigabytes worth of storage because I've been burned several times on OSs that need more storage than what I would normally give them. So I'm giving it more. I also have given this thing like uh, eight gigabytes of RAM and four CPU cores and all the video memory it could handle. So let's go ahead and hit start and see what this thing is all about. Now, it's been a long time since I've actually used a VirtualBox in a floating window manager, so this looks really weird to me. But we're going to go ahead and actually see if we can make this full screen, which we can. We're waiting 10 seconds for our device here. Hopefully this loads right the first time. If this doesn't actually load and we can't install the damn thing, then this episode is going to end prematurely. And I'll be swearing up a storm because I've been planning this episode for a while because I haven't actually installed this, this distribution yet. Uh, this is completely new for me. I have a like a tooltip there. It went away. Good. So we have a, a cursor. And we have a splash screen. So that's good. Uh, interesting choice of background. Other than that, that just looks like the standard KDE Plasma splash screen. This definitely does look interesting. Uh, because normally on a KDE Plasma desktop... We don't get, you know, it just looks like a KDE Plasma desktop. You know, it has the bar along the bottom. It looks like Windows. This is different, so I'll judge it once I've installed it. But so far, kind of cool. Auto-hide on that bar up there. And let's see here. Your display resolution has changed. The look and feel theme you're using is Blue Star Linux Abstract Color. Would you like to reset your desktop layout, scale to the new resolution? Sure. Okay. Interesting. Okay, so it made the bar bigger. All right, so let's see here. What if we want to install? Oh, we got the install thing right here. All right, so this is the Calamari's installer. Okay, so here's where we're going to get to choose which version of the Blue Star installation we want to use. Uh, I'm going to choose desktop, but oddly, they don't really tell you what the difference is between these. Even on their website, there was no... Hey, this is what you get if you install this one. This is what you get install this one. This is what you get you know, install this one. Weird. For the basic, it says here, for the basic installation without internet access, disable your internet connection and restart the installer. This may prevent issues with DVD-based installation. Okay. So you can install this without the internet, which is nice. Other than that, I think I'm just going to go ahead and hit next. And that time zone is fine. That keyboard is fine, and we're going to just go ahead and erase the disk. We don't need a swap here. That doesn't really matter. It's installing on the right hard drive because there is only one hard drive in this VM. And then we're going to give it our credentials. So my name is Matt. The name to log in is Matt. We can name this Blue Star OS thing. And we'll give it a very strong and complicated password. Much stronger than anybody else's password ever has been. Now I will select this to use the same password as the administrator account. And we'll not log in automatically. Because then what would be the point of providing the world's strongest password? We'll hit next. Ooh, what's this? So this, please choose a look and feel for the KD Plasma desktop. Why would they have you choose the look and feel before you do the installation? Why not after? weird uh you get multiple choices which one do we want to choose now this one here right here is that we're using right now is the the default i have to say i'm not that impressed with it i don't care for this color scheme so let's choose a different one let's choose this one here oh it actually ch changes in the background kind of uh, what else do you got here oh this one here looks fun we'll choose that one all right, fine. It doesn't matter. We'll see if we able, we're able to change that afterwards because I'd much rather be able to change them and see the changes live like you would normally would in a Plasma desktop. Okay, hitting install. Install now. Okay, so I'm going to cut the video here and I'll come back when it's ready. A few moments later. All right, I'm back. As you can see, this thing is not installing. It has now been very close to 20 minutes. I've run out of patience. I'm going to let it keep installing here in the background, and we're going to take a, a, a gander around the operating system just in case it can't be installed. 
I don't know what the hell's going on. It's been stuck at 91% for the vast majority of the time it's been installing. And uh, I don't know what's going on. Uh, it did open up the system update thing over here where it showed some progress. But it's been on 19 out of 19 for ages and ages. And um, yeah, it's just stuck there. Now, I have half a mind to go through and just restart it and see if it will try, you know, try again. Uh, and maybe I will. I'm thinking about it. What well, should I do this? Oh, I hate when things go wrong. You want to fine. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Something else came up. Hmm. Maybe I had to close that all the, maybe the whole thing is I had to go through and close that in order to get to proceed. That'd be hilarious. Cause I would have just been sitting there forever and ever. Um, we'll see if this makes any progress now. Okay, so after a further five or six minutes and letting it go through and installing even more packages, that did seem to be the problem, is that I had to close that window in order to get to actually proceed. Uh, zero instructions on whether or not, you, uh, you know, to tell you had to do that. You just had to, you know, figure that out yourself. So I could have been sitting there for hours on end expecting it to eventually finish and... Uh, Granted, I would have never actually done that. I lost my patience after 20 minutes, so there was no way I was actually going to sit there for an hour. But Okay, so uh, first impressions of the installing of Blue Star OS, that was crap. Uh, Calamari's is a very well-rounded, well-defined, well-refined installer. There's a proper way of doing it. There's a reason why every distribution out there, except for like the Ubuntu-based distros, and even half of them use it. You know, there's a reason why so many distributions use Calamari's is because it's good. You know, you don't have to change it to the point where you have to bring up pop-ups to outside programs in order to install stuff. This is... That's... Uh, the, why? <laughs> don't mess with something that works, okay? Just don't. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and hit the restart system and see if it will go through and remove the installation media itself. If not, we'll do that for, for it, but sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. We'll see how this goes. And uh, let's see here. So I think it's just trying to do the, the live one. So we're going to go ahead and do this and we'll see what the startup time looks like. And oh boy. That is a very unthemed SDDM. Okay, so we're going to type in our username and our very strong and complicated password and hit enter here. And we get, we're going to go ahead and wait for Plasma to load up. Very pretty background. Much This is a much better looking background than the default one, at least in my opinion. Here we go. All right, so the... F All right, good. And we can go ahead, yes. That way... The resolution is proper. Okay, so we have a conky here along the side, and this we know this is a conky because you can't move them. We have a like a file manager slash number of icons here at the at the uh, on the top left. Uh, not necessarily something I would do in my desktop, but whatever. We also have this big honking icon here. that says please donate. I'm not, you know, whoa, it even gets bigger. <laughs> okay. I don't really have anything wrong with that, but it's weird that it's not, you know, like, side-aligned or something. It's weird that it's right in the middle. Anyways, we also have the weather over here at the, at the on the side, and if we hover over that, we actually get some more weather. Okay, so this is Blue Star Linux. So, along the top here, we have a regular plasma bar with a, with a time and... Uh, a standard drop-down menu, which you can hardly see because of that transparency. I like transparency, but a little bit less transparency there probably would be good in order to actually be able to see it. And then we have a little bit of a system tray up here at the top. Most of the icons that you normally get with Plasma seem to be missing, so that's something you'd have to decide whether or not you wanted to fix. And we have a calculator icon at the top, because a calculator is what we all need in life. Okay, so here along the bottom we have what looks like Latte Doc, which it is Latte Doc, Latte Doc. and we have Pin, Dolphin, Console, uh, GIMP, VLC, 
LibreOffice Writer. FileZilla is installed apparently by default. Thunderbird, Firefox, Chromium, Pigeon, and Transmission Qt, and System Settings. So first we'll go to Console here. And uh, one thing I hate about Console is that it, it really, really, a lot of times opens up in weird dimensions. So what we're going to do is zoom in here, and we'll do uname-a first. We do have a NeoFetch up here, so we can see that this is um, using 5.14, so I guess I don't really have to do uname. And um, kwin, kde, and 1700 packages by default. That's quite high for a an uh, Arch-based distro, so that means they're installing quite a lot of programs. We'll take a look at that here in a few minutes. And um, let's see here. It's using just the standard Arch uh, icon here. So we'll go ahead and try you, uh, you name it. It won't hurt anything. Uh, 5.14.9, that's just, just the regular Arch-based uh, kernel. And we'll do free-m. This is a Plasma one, so I wouldn't expect me to be using too much. Actually, that's quite high. Wow. Uh, plasma is usually around 600, so this is quite a bit more than normal. This is more in GNOME levels. Uh, I'm quite shocked to see that. So that means they have quite a bit of stuff running behind. So let's go ahead and clear this and see if HTOP is installed. It is. Okay, so in terms of memory usage, Plasma is using the most of it in LatteDoc. So my guess is the reason why is because they have a ton of stuff on the desktop that you n normal plasma desktops don't have out of the box so you have 92 tasks 195 threads and uh, we're using 1.21 gigabytes of ram right now now that uh htop is running okay so that's a little high we can close we can close that so let's go ahead and take a look and see what all this installs so because so far it looks like a very bloated arch install and, and there's nothing wrong with that um out of the box arco linux is very bloated as well but the difference is during the arco linux install you get a choice of a ton of different software you can go through and choose a lot of what you have installed out of the box this just installed the stuff so Let's go ahead and, like I said, see what they have in terms of stuff installing. Unfortunately, the trans the transparency here is just going to be a pain in the ass. So, in development, we have tr uh, translation, Akonai, console, CM make, cuttlefish, GHEX. Wow, a lot of the stuff here. See, remember, we did not choose the developer edition. As far as I'm pretty sure, I just chose the basic one. So we shouldn't get all this developer stuff, but we do. I'm not even going to read the rest of the stuff because we're. Not, I mean. Wow, compares there too. That's a, a like a cute version of Mel, I believe. Education, mathematics, LibreOffice math is basically you're in two places. Interestingly, games we have card games and that's K patient. So we're gonna have a lot of the the KDE plasma stuff. Let's see, Digicam, uh, GIMP, Gwenview, Color Paint, K Photo Album, LibreOffice Draw, Ocular, Surreal Photo, Veer Noir, XDVI, uh, more applications, K Color Chooser and K Ruler. Internet, ooh, here we got a lot of stuff. Uh, aggregator, uh, Avahi, VNC Server, Chromium, Dropbox, FileZilla, Firefox, IM Context, KD, IM Log Viewer, KGET, KML, Conqueror, uh, Copete. Uh, some of this stuff I don't even know. <laughs> uh, KTorrent, I'm just going to skip some of this stuff. Megasync, Pigeon, uh, PIM, Data Explorer, Exporter, Putty, C. Editor, Skype is installed by default, Liber Thunderbird, Transmission, Qt, and WPA GUI. Okay, so there's a ton of stuff that they've installed here, and to, including two different browsers, uh, although I don't... Oh, three different browsers, because Conqueror is here, just in case you wanted to use Conqueror. Firefox and Chromium, Dropbox and FileZilla, that stuff is not stuff that you normally see in a distribution, but you know, there's no problem with it being here. Uh, a ton of Office different stuff here. We have Calibre, ebook e stuff, uh, K-Mail and Contact, K-Organizer, LibreOffice is here, the full suite, Ocular, and uh, Localize, which is interesting. I haven't seen that in ages. Let's see, our under Settings, we have the normal Settings stuff, including the Ice-T Web Control Panel. What the f fuck is that? I've never... <laughs> This is a control panel for setting deployment properties. So, the, again, we did not install the development version of the ISO. So, 
why did it install the stuff? That's really weird. Okay, I'm going to close that. I don't know what the hell that's all about. Going back. So, utilities. Oh, I'm not going through all that stuff. Holy hell. Most of that stuff is going to be the regular uh, K stuff. Look at all these K things here. A lattes here. Um, spectacle, sweeper, Vim. Oh, Vim is installed by default. You've won me over. <laughs> Most distributions nowadays don't include Vim for whatever reason. Uh, HP UI scan for printers and stuff is here. And a please, do a please donate button right here in the in the menu. Really pushing that, I think, just a little bit much. I'm surprised it's not also in the dock. I'm just saying. Okay, so that that's the uh, a brief overview of the number of applications you see installed. And now we can see why it took so long because there's quite a lot there. So let's see here. Let's take a look at the system settings. So by default, we get this theme here. And this theme here is, it's not very good looking if you just ask me. Because this is, I mean, what's interesting is they had us choose the look and feel there before the installation was in. But we have, I've seen nothing of that. Here, there was no welcome app, nothing like that. So there's, you know, nothing we can change here. Now we can see if they have those apps or those themes pre-installed. So we can go through to through to appearance, and they do have those things pre-installed. So we can actually change to a couple of different ones and see what they look like. See if there's anything different. We'll just apply this. The answer to that is no. They all are exactly the same, or at least those two have been exactly the same. I mean, we can close, we can, uh, usually Plasma is pretty good at changing this stuff live. And we'll try to try another one. Like this one here should be a different one here. And so we'll open up Dolphin again. And no, it looks exactly the same. Okay, so what the point of these themes are, I'm not exactly sure why they're not changing. Maybe there's literally nothing different. Choose this one here. Again, nothing there appears to have changed at all. I mean, usually, Plasma is really good at changing things live. And, and in fact, we'll choose one that we know is completely different. So we'll just choose Breeze. And we'll apply this. Yeah, that worked fine. Uh, application style, we'll go back here and choose Breeze as well. If we, if we uh, open up Dolphin now, yeah. Even if the, the, the window decorations didn't change, that's just because... Uh, they, we probably have to change them somewhere else here in Plasma style. No, oh, it looks like it should have changed, but it doesn't matter. So all the sh themes that they come pre-installed are all apparently exactly the same, which is makes me wonder why they, you know, install. I'm assuming what is supposed to change is the background, but the system settings won't change the background with the theme. You have to change that manually. So that's just a little weird. Anyways, uh... Other than that, this looks like a standard KDE Plasma install. I'm assuming that this is the most up-to-date version of Plasma, which it is. And, uh, because this is basically Arch. So we should get, I mean, it's literally reading it as Arch Linux. That's it. So they haven't done any branding at all. They've installed their themes and stun, installed a ton of software and fucked around with the, the Calamari's installer. And that's what they seem to have done. And somehow made uh, plasma so that it runs a ton, a ton hotter in terms of memory than what it normally does. I don't know exactly what it is that's causing plasma here to use so much memory, but normally it does not do that. Um, I don't know if it's this weird theme that they have installed or if it's the conky that they have on the desktop. I don't know. We did get that to change, interestingly enough. Okay, so maybe those aren't actually. Yeah, those aren't, that is not conky. That, that, those are actual widgets from KD Plasma. Interesting. I've never actually used those things because I don't want those things on my desktop. But whatever. Okay, so, all right. There's not much here more than I can say. Uh, so the answer to the question, what the fuck is Blue Star Linux? The answer to the, the question is that it's Arch Linux with a bunch of cruft on top of it. And the, the reason why it would exist, I couldn't really tell you. If you're interested in an Arch-based distro that has a ton of uh, stuff, 
Arco is probably a better choice for you. Garuda is also a good choice. Endeavor is a good choice. Those are all Arch-based distros that come with a lot of options, and you can go through and customize what you install before you install it, whereas this just installs a bunch of stuff that you may not need. And uh, the fact that it didn't really follow... I, It'd be interesting to see, and I'm not going to do this because I don't have that kind of time, interesting to see what the developer version actually comes with because if this has so much in terms of developer tools already installed, I wonder what the development version has uh, because you would assume that it would have more development stuff because it's for developers. I don't know. It's, uh, it's weird. Uh, I'm all for people making their own you know, Linux distros. I think it's a good thing to do. I don't really even argue that all distros have to have a purpose in order to exist. Sometimes people just make distros on a lark for a hobby or something, and that's perfectly fine. They're making it for themselves, and that's okay. What I question <laughs> is why this is so far up in DistroWatch's, you know, rankings. I mean, now we all know. I mean, I made the joke earlier, but DistroWatch's rankings aren't accurate. This is not the 39th most popular distribution ever. Uh, we know that. Uh, so either the developers out there has a bot that keeps visiting their page in order to keep that ranking high, or there are actually people out there installing this thing. So in the comments below, let me know if you've heard of Blue Star Linux. Let me know if you've installed it, because I would love to know the reason why you've chose it. So that is it for this video. If you'd like to see more of this series, leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel. We're getting very, very close to 5,000 subscribers. I'm, I'm just, that blows my fucking mind. It really, really does. Thanks everybody who has subscribed. Those of you who haven't, please do so. I really do appreciate it. You can also follow me on Twitter at LinuxCast, and you can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast. Before I go, I'd like to take a moment to thank my current patrons. Devon, Chris, East Coast Web, Gen 2 is Fun 2, Patrick L, Marcus, Meglin, Sven, Jackson, Knife and Tools, Steve A, Mitchell, Art Center, Merrick, Camp, Joshua Lee, J-Dog, and the BSTs Rock. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.